Did you know that the average person makes 35,000 different decisions every single day? You ever face a tough decision and wish you just had a crystal ball that would show you the right choice to pick? Well, in today's video, we're going to explore Ray Dalio's systematic approach to decision making along with some of my new prompts and processes for using AI to create decision trees. So whether you're making life-changing personal decisions, investing in projects, or trying to hire the right talent, Dalio's methods combined with AI can transform how you navigate these crossroads. By breaking down complex decisions into manageable steps and leveraging AI decision trees, you'll learn how to make strategic choices that align with your goals. So if you're ready to level up your decision-making skills and tap into the predictive power of AI, stick around as we explore how to make decisions like a pro. If you're new to the Blazing Zebra channel, I want to welcome you and thank you for joining me on my mission of helping entrepreneurs, marketers, and decision makers of all types all over the world learn to use these new AI tools. If you're enjoying these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I've got cheat sheet versions of all of my videos immediately available if you join my Patreon. I've also got some coaching options in there as well. This is based on Ray Dalio's approach to decision making. I've done another video on Ray Dalio and I've got a few more in the works. The first video I'll link to right now was all about his problem solving framework. So setting uh, clear goals and pushing through problems to reaching those goals. Today is more about systematic decision making using decision trees. There's a couple different things here that I've created. These uh, acronyms decide and best so decide is the decision tree process which we're gonna get through here in a second and then I found that there were some missing components to that so I created this second framework uh, called best and these two work together to really make sure you're covering all your bases with whatever decision you are looking to make so Defining the decision, it's critical to just take each one of these one at a time, clearly stating the decision you need to make, evaluating the choices separately, listing all the different possible actions that you can take, considering all those different outcomes, focusing on one, each of these individually with one prompt, making sure that you're focusing that the full compute power of a response from these large language models into each one of these sections. Identifying the different probabilities is the next section. Determining the payoffs, as I mentioned, assigning a value or payoff to each outcome. Executing the tree, creating that decision tree that shows visually the probabilities and the payoffs. Again, that visual representation, which I'm going to show you here, is, is really helpful to, to, to wrap your mind around some of these abstract ideas. Then these best framework, the decision bias prompt that we're going to get into will help you reduce these different biases, confirmation bias. Uh, anchoring bias, sunk cost fallacy, availability bias, and group think. And anybody really looking to make dis strategic decisions uh, needs to be focused on these. And thank goodness we now have these large language models to help us uh, get outside of ourselves, get outside of our emotional decision making, and uh, really create some, make some good decisions. You know, using their third party, uh, ideally unbiased uh, point of view. The cost benefit analysis here. Looking at uh, systematically, you know, what is the what is the benefit for for the cost here, and calculating this net present value in PV, which is uh, a helpful uh, metric that we're, I'm going to show you here. Scenario planning here. This makes me think of the show Succession, where they're always gaming out the different scenarios. That's exactly what we're doing here: identifying different uncertainties, developing scenarios, and creating contingency plans if things inevitably go a little bit sideways. Ways. And then finally, that transparent communication section, crafting clear messages, addressing concerns and highlighting benefits, uh, using multiple different channels and identifying the proper stakeholders that need to know uh, about the decision that you've made. All right, so that's what we're going to cover today. We're going to show it to you in a few different ways. We're going to start with some prompts. Uh, and then we're going to get into a custom GPT that I've built that goes through all of these steps in probably a better way than the prompts 
uh, do just one after another. And then what I'd really encourage you to do is think about how you can customize this. That's why these cheat sheets are so valuable is that you can grab these prompts and you can start to manipulate them. You can grab the in custom GPT instructions that I've created straight from the cheat sheet and manipulate that to really make it your own and turn this into a custom, truly custom GPT around the way that you make decisions and your business, etc. So with that being said, let's jump into the cheat sheet. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I create one of these for each video that I go through. It includes all of the prompts and resources that we're going to go through. So if you want to work through this with me, go ahead and grab that in my Patreon. It's available to my Patreon supporters as are all of my cheat sheets. I have well over 80 cheat sheets in there now. They're all all immediately available to anybody who joins uh, on my Patreon and helps support this mission of helping our entrepreneurs and decision makers learn to use these AI models. Let's get started with step one here. Please help me clearly and comprehensively define the decision I need to make. I want to ensure that I fully understand the core issue at hand. This is critical. Do not explore potential options or consequences because oftentimes one of the big problems with these uh, large language models is they try to do too much with each and every response. So you don't want them to try to think through the whole, uh, basically the whole decision in one go. You want to really focus them in on this one step. So do not explore potential options or consequences. My initial understanding of the decision is, and then you just pop in you know a quick summary of the decision that you want to make here so let me show you how this works i'm just going to copy and paste this straight out of the cheat sheet i'm dropping this into chat gpt 4.0 and i'm asking it about a decision that i'm currently facing right now whether i should hire someone to help me edit my youtube videos or not i spend a ton of time editing editing these videos and i would like some help with that but you know it's a tough decision so here we go. Let's see what we can figure out. And it is actually throwing some ideas here about how I can clarify this. Sometimes it'll ask some questions about uh, the decision, which will help you clarify it. And that can be a pretty important step to go through. This can be one of the actually the points that you want to spend a little bit of time giving it a little bit of extra detail around the decision so that it can guide everything afterwards. So this is the part to take a pause, take a breath, and think through what information does the model need. It doesn't need a ton, but just a couple sentences more about the situation can really help with everything downstream. Great, now it's summarized all of this for me. We'll move on to the next step. Here's that next prompt for identifying the choices, identifying all of the options that we have available to us. And again, telling it, do not explore the potential outcomes yet. We want it to focus all of its compute power, all of its energy on generating a robust and lengthy list of options that we have to choose from. This can be one of the most helpful parts of the entire process. Really cool. This has listed a lot of different options that I hadn't thought of, potentially throwing it out to my audience, trial periods, you know, focusing on AI based editing tools, of which there are many coming out. Uh, Descript re recently launched some really cool AI tools that I'm looking at. Um, financial considerations, it's even throwing that in there of how I can pay for this person, which is interesting collaboration, all sorts of stuff. When I was just thinking of hiring or not hiring, here are all the different options. Even thinking about a video editing agency, I hadn't thought of that. Now I'm gonna move on to this next prompt to determine the outcomes. And I'm only gonna select a handful of the options here. I'm not gonna have it go through the outcomes of every single option just the ones that I'm most interested in, maybe two or three different options, including the option of not hiring someone at all. You wanna keep that in mind as an option of just not doing anything at all. So I've identified intern, freelancer, and agency as the options I'm most interested in. And now it has given us a great list of the positive and negative outcomes for each of those options. This is the intern option, the freelancer option, and the agency option. 
Now assigning probabilities. So looking at those and trying to define what the probabilities of success or the probabilities of the positive and or negative things happening. This is an important part of the decision tree deciding um, you know, how likely these different outcomes are. I'm just gonna copy this right into ChatGPT. One of the things I really like about this prompt is that you're asking it to consider historical data. This can be one prompt where it makes a lot of sense to have it access the internet and look for data that can help you make the decision or at least assign these different probabilities. Awesome, and this is one thing I would have definitely forgotten is assigning the probabilities of the negative outcomes. My mind is always focused on the probabilities of the positive outcomes, but it's by assigning probabilities to the negative outcomes that we can really start to get under the hood and understand the uh, chances of success with any given uh, choice. So here's a prompt for calculating the payoffs, and depending on the type of decision you're going to make, this can be a very powerful prompt to use, especially if you know uh, deeply the costs associated with certain things and you have that information at hand. I'm not going to use that one right now. I'm going to jump right to creating this tree. Step six here shows us this prompt. How might I convert everything we've discussed so far into a decision tree? as a visual aid in my decision making. And here it is, creating the decision tree for us. It's also given us ideas of how to create it in other tools. If you're making a presentation, that can be pretty useful. Wow, so that was quite a lot. Uh, it has never given me this much information with that prompt. Uh, I am convinced that these tools know that they're being watched. It's always a little different uh, when I'm recording the video than when I'm doing the research. Okay, so next you can perform a deeper analysis on the tree if you have a lot of different choices to decide. This is a fairly simple uh, decision tree that I've created here, but yours might be a little bit more elaborate. You can do a little bit more analysis here with the expected value calculation and pr pruning the tree, so removing different branches that have lower expected values. Once you start to see this data, you can start to say, okay, that's really not an option anymore. Prune that branch off off before you make the final calculation of the decision. I'm just going to jump to that right here and let's see what it came up with. And it has generated a lot of different calculations for making this decision. You can look through these and adjust them based on any information that you have, especially when it comes to costs and fees associated. It's uh, made some assumptions here about some of these fees. But I think this looks pretty good. I'm going to say it should go ahead and calculate these and let us know what its final decision is. It's going to be running some Python in the background to make these decisions. And it has selected the agency option here. As a marketing agency owner, I am really excited uh, about that. And I did not pay ChatGPT to say that, but I thought this was really interesting. And this is something that can be very helpful if you are going to now have to uh, get some buy-in from your team, showing them that you went through all of these different cost-benefit analysis. And these are, uh, you know, how... These are the metrics, these are the methodology uh, rules and so forth, the principles, if you want to use Ray Dalio's term, that you used to create this data-informed decision. Awesome. So if you know me, you know that I'm a huge fan of these custom GPTs. And of course, I've created a custom GPT for creating these decision trees. There's a link to that in the cheat sheet that's available to my Patreon supporters. And there's also in the cheat sheet all of the instructions of what's going on uh, behind the scenes so that you can modify those for however you want to make your decisions. Let me show you how this puppy works. I'm just going to click Let's Begin. Okay, so this is taking us through those same steps, but this time I'm going to take a different angle and I'm going to use it to help me decide between three different freelancers. And I've entered their information here and their experience and their rates, etc. I have anonymized. These aren't their actual names. There's some things that I've changed around, so don't worry about any privacy issues for these folks. Uh, it's not an issue. And it has now given us a problem summary about what we're trying to decide and has regurgitated those facts back to us. 
asks us, does this capture everything? Any additional tweaks? I'm gonna say, looks good, please proceed. Step two, generating a comprehensive list, pros and cons. I love it, it's giving us some additional ideas. You can think about an internal team member or hiring on a project by project basis, really helping us think outside of the box, outside of where we're already going with this. I'm gonna add in here, I would like to add the option of not hiring anyone at all. It's updating that list. I wanna always make sure that that's in there. Please proceed. It's going through the positive and negative outcomes. I love these custom GPTs. GPT 4.0 is super fast. And then all you need to really do is look at all that information, see if it's missing anything, and tell it to proceed. It's going through with the probabilities. This is one you wanna pay extra attention to, making sure you agree with these probabilities. Now assigning values. This is a little bit more of a complex decision tree. It's got the payoff values in there. And now step seven, calculating the expected value. It's pretty cool because these are not all apples to apples, but through doing this, you can kind of get a feel for what you're in for. It's now creating this version of a decision tree, and this can be another interesting way to visually represent the data. I've seen it take two different approaches, the one we saw in the last video, or in the last example, and the one that we're looking at here. We're now pruning the tree to remove any of the options that really have the lowest expected value. And now moving on to step nine to make the final decision. Had a little glitch there, just had to tell it to please proceed a couple times. <laughs> I think we're kind of pushing it to the limits here. Final decision, Jordan Chen, which is interesting because I've run this a few different times and it takes very different paths, but it comes back with this final decision each time, which is, uh, I guess says something. Awesome, so you can see how we have made a very systematic, methodical decision using data uh, and really helped me get my mind wrapped around uh, this hiring decision. Back in the cheat sheet, I've got a bunch more in here, many, many more prompts than we have time to cover today. Uh, one of the most important prompts here is about identifying decision biases. So I have a prompt there. Again, it has some notes on the most uh, critical decision biases that I went through at the earlier part of the video. Uh, and then this prompt that you can run through to protect yourself from any of those uh, confirmation bias, et cetera. There's more in here on doing a cost benefit analysis. So really doubling back on your decision and looking at those costs associated, making sure that it makes sense doing this net present value calculation. Here is a fairly lengthy prompt um, all about that cost benefit analysis scenario planning so once you've made a decision thinking through all of the different scenarios this is a big part of ray dalio's process again all of this is in the cheat sheet you can copy and paste it you can make it your own there's another whole section here on communicating the decision i've got a, a prompt for that how to identify the key stakeholders and craft persuasive messages etc i hope you got something out of this video i really had a blast making it i will see you on on the next video and I really appreciate you watching. Make your dream come true.